This video is brought to you by Raycon True Wireless Earbuds. Stick around to hear more about them and also a special offer they're making available through my channel. Let's count the big looters that have launched in the last, I don't know, 10 years. What have we got? We got uh, Diablo 3, Path of Exile, Warframe, Destiny 1 and 2, The Division 1 and 2, Anthem, Fallout 76, Borderlands 2 and 3, and Marvel's Avengers. Probably some others I've missed. Now, the common theme with most of these, not all, but most, is that they launch in a pretty shabby state full of bugs and balance issues and massive problems with their core loot and progression and they just lack content, just stuff to do, especially stuff to do for the hundreds or thousands of hours that the developers of these games promised us. The looter genre is famous for being crappy at launch and throughout the last 10 years we'd always thought we'd seen the worst of it. We always thought there's no way it could get any worse than this when along comes some new overhyped boondoggle to show us that there is no bottom when it comes to this genre. It's just this endless, bottomless abyss. Which brings us to Godfall, a game so bad that I genuinely believe it is the worst looter launch in history. Like of all of these games I've listed before, they all had their problems. Some of them absolutely crippling problems. But I absolutely, firmly believe that none of these games were in anywhere near as bad shape as this is right now. So you might be like, oh, that's ridiculous. How could it be more buggy than Fallout 76? How could the campaign be worse than Vanilla Destiny? How could the loot be worse than Anthem? The thing about each of those games and those like them is that they each had these critical flaws that would really fuck the game, but they also had some good stuff. Like Destiny's campaign sucked, but the gunplay was amazing. Or Anthem's loot sucked, but it felt cool to fly around like Iron Man. And The Division 1 was buggy and unbalanced, but its RPG customization allowed for genuine build flexibility. Each of these games had some redeeming qualities that people could hook into and that would help them overlook the other bad stuff. Godfall isn't worse than any of these other games in any specific area. The problem is that it's nearly as bad as them, but in all areas at once. Like if you imagine those spider graphs and you kind of plot the issues with these other games and you see these massive spikes in certain areas but it's like less spiky in others, if you plotted Godfall, none of its specific areas would spike out as hard as those other games, but the total surface area that sums up just how bad and broken and unfinished this game is would absolutely trounce anything that has come before it. The result is, and I don't use this term lightly, I really believe this game is a massive scam. This game is 70 US dollars, it's 130 Australian dollars to buy off the shelf at retail. This game is so lacking in content, so badly designed, so buggy and so incomplete that if it were a free to play, early access title, I would still say, do not play this. The fact that you could buy versions of this game for like 189 Australian dollars is just it's just robbery. So at this point, you're like, fine, yes, enough intro. What are the problems? Tell us. With a game like this, with so many issues, it's genuinely difficult to know where to begin. So we're just going to do it in sequence. We'll do visuals and performance, and the campaign, combat, progression, end game, and, and other stuff. Let's just, let's begin. Godfall is easily the most next-gen looking next-gen game to be released during this next-gen launch window. It could be argued that its visuals were the sort of flagship for the PS5 when Sony secured Godfall as an exclusive and trotted it out in a number of its PS5 reveal live streams. Yes, Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs and Dirt 5 were also launching on next-gen hardware, but none of them sparkled in quite the same way that Godfall did, and many were excited to pick this up because it felt like a great showcase of the power of next-gen, something that would help stave off potential buyer's remorse as your eyeballs gave your brain the constant reassurance of, see, I told you it was worth buying this on day one. I use the word sparkle very deliberately because yeah, that's kind of Godfall's thing. It's really shiny. Everything is gilded, all its surfaces painted in a high gloss finish. Even the very floors you walk on reflect light, like a recently polished gym floor. This is a very shiny game. But I don't think it's a good looking game at all. I think it's gaudy and boorish and garish. It's like if Donald Trump became a level designer. Everything you see is just this. This overly saturated, overly shiny, overly particle affected assault on your retinas. 
Good visual design is totally independent from graphical processing power. That's why Breath of the Wild is one of the best looking games ever and it runs on the Nintendo Switch, which is basically a calculator compared to the PS5. It's not the size of your teraflop, it's how you use it. And Godfall's biggest technical achievement is that it reminds us of this fact as it bombards us with golden temple, golden ruins, golden sanctums, golden bosses and golden showers. The visual detail that's packed into each enemy and each area is very much a function of how limited your play space is. Godfall is a game that would have you believe it's full of vast open worlds to explore, but it's exclusively comprised of narrow passages opening up into slightly less narrow combat spaces and where never more than five or six enemies take the field at a time. This is next-gen hardware rendering next-gen detail, but it's doing so in a decidedly last-gen level design framework. It's the sort of level design we saw at the launch of Warframe back in 2013, a design that they've since moved on from with the launch of their own open-world spaces. It's difficult to praise Godfall for its visuals when it sets its sights so low. It's doubly difficult to praise Godfall's technical aspects when it runs this badly. I played it on the PS5 where frame rates were very inconsistent, regularly dropping down when the action was thickest and when the particle effects went into overdrive. These weren't as annoying as the constant crashes I had to endure. I mean, I think I played this for, I don't know, maybe 20 hours or whatever. It must have crashed at least 10 times in that, maybe more. It's important to note that the end game of Godfall is built around long gauntlet style runs and that crashing midway through these nets you zero rewards, something I learned the hard way twice before I eventually just gave up. None of this, though, is as annoying as the micro stutters that occurred all the fucking time. You'll kill something and just as it explodes into a blinding shower of particles, the entire game will freeze up for a split second and then carry on. The thing is, this occurs on the PC version of the game as well, so it's not a problem with the PS5, this is a problem with Godfall. For a game like this, a fast melee combat game, fluctuating frame rates are a big problem since it messes with the timing of your attacks and your movements and your blocks and your parries. Having the entire game seize up at regular intervals completely breaks the flow of combat, especially given how this combat is designed, which is something we will come back to later. Overall, yes, it's shiny, but I think it looks terrible and it runs like ass. Godfall presents itself as a game with deep lore and gripping storytelling. Nope. It's funny because my friend Bife did a lore series about the game that showcases the lore and whatever, and Bife did a far better job of telling the story of this game and this world than the developers did. Like, a lot better. Godfall is set in a kingdom somewhere where people live, I don't know if you call them people, and then one of them is bad and he tries to kill another one of them, but the other one lives and then he gets to this Cortana looking thing and she tells him that old mate is trying to become a god, and that's apparently bad because it just is. So we have to stop him from becoming a god by killing his lieutenants and collecting tokens, I think. So to say that Godfall has a story is really unfair to the word story. I feel like the best parallel is actually Vanilla Destiny, where you just kind of shuttled awkwardly from mission to mission with the faint remnants of connective dialogue to hold it all together. And even then, Destiny wasn't half as bad as this is. I mean, the entire campaign is about 12 hours long max, and there's only two NPCs that you talk to the entire time, and one of them is this Cortana thing, and the other one is this Vivi meets Rise looking dude, who apparently is weaponsmith even though he holds a giant scroll on his back. I don't know how that doesn't get set on fire by the forge, but anyway, the way every mission works is that, and this is true by the way, you, you walk up to Cortana and she says something like, oh, it's really bad that he's trying to become a god, and you're like, yeah, totally. And then you get told to walk over to this other dude, you actually get a mission marker to go over to him and talk to him, and he says something like, man, that bad guy sure is bad, isn't he? And you're like, yeah, totally. And then you get sent back to Cortana, and she's like, go and collect me five air tokens so we can open a door. And you're like, yeah, totally. That's all you get in the way of story for this game. Like, that's all. There's nothing else. It's just running back and forward between two NPCs, and that's the story. Terrible. Okay, so what are you doing during the actual campaign? Okay, you remember that mission in Anthem where the whole campaign ground to a halt, and you had to do really annoying open world shit like kill X number of enemies and open X number of chests, etc. Godfall's campaign isn't the same as that, but it 
feels the same as that. It feels like it just dumps you on the open world map to do random stuff, rather than trying to curate actual missions like you experience in you know, Destiny and Division and whatever else. So there are three zones, Earth, Water and Air. More zones are coming as part of paid DLC in the future because of course they are. Each of these zones is essentially just a series of interconnected corridors. You boot up specific missions from the world map, which are always some sort of hunt a target mission. And it gives you like 45 minutes to complete these missions. So you're thinking to yourself, hey, this must be like Monster Hunter. I'm in for, a, I'm in for an epic battle here. But no, it takes like two minutes to kill these targets and then it's over. I just, I, what, what is this game? Anyway, so you do these missions, kill the target at the end, and then that unlocks a few more missions. And eventually you get to a sort of cock block thing where you need to access a final boss, but he's hidden behind a door. So you need to collect tokens to open that door. So you have to go back to the missions you've already done and then do them again to collect the tokens. So you do that and then you unlock the boss door and kill the boss and then there's this tower thing like an elevator where you have to do combat challenges and then that gets you into the new area. You repeat exactly what I've described three times, once for each area and then you kill the final final boss and it's game over. That's the campaign. And just to be clear, the grind for these tokens increases in each new zone. So by the end, you need a whole bunch. And this would be really daunting, except for how quick the missions are. Like, you, you essentially just find the mission that gives the most tokens. And then you load in and you kill the target in like two minutes. And then you load in and do it again. You do the same mission twice back to back to get the tokens you need. And then you're done. Like, that's honestly what they have imagined that you should do for a campaign that you've just paid like 70 us dollars for my description really cannot do justice to just how half ass this campaign is there's absolutely nothing here the levels all feel and look the same even when you're in different locations the mission structure never changes or becomes more interesting there's no like set piece moments or there's just nothing it's just woeful and it's not even the worst part of this game that award goes to the combat. I came to Godfall late as there were other next-gen launch games I wanted to play through first. As such, reviews were out by the time I started playing and I read a few of them. I read that, yeah, the level design is bad, the story is non-existent, the campaign is repetitive, but, but, the combat is really good. I read this from multiple outlets, so I actually walked into Godfall quite optimistic because I really believe that so long as the core gameplay loop of your looter game is solid, then there's hope for your game even if the rest is kind of shit. Having played Godfall now, I am genuinely stunned that anyone would say that this combat is good. Like, I'm genuinely stunned by that. Let's start with visual presentation of combat. The first really frustrating thing you're going to see is how tight in the camera is and there's no way to pull the camera back or adjust the field of view. This is like Batman Arkham where your character takes up a third of the screen. Only in Batman or Bayonetta or Devil May Cry, the developers will dynamically reposition the camera so you can take in all of the action. That doesn't happen here. It's just a static, telescopic view of the action that feels claustrophobic. You just constantly feel like you can't see enough of the battlefield because you can't. What makes this even worse is that the UI that they have to tell you where enemies are and warn you about incoming attacks is basically invisible. Like, ha if you've been watching this video, have you noticed the UI pointers? I fucking didn't until my editor pointed them out to me. They are impossible to see. They're this small, grey, like, grayscale little thing and they just disappear all of the time either because enemies obscure them or they just get subsumed by the constant explosion of particles. As a result you are constantly being surprised attacked by enemies without any warning whatsoever and no way to avoid that other than to constantly position your character in such a way that you can see all of these enemies at once. This means you'll spend so much time just circling your foes waiting for a safe engagement angle that gives you a view of the battlefield rather than just you know fighting like you'd want to. The final nail in this equation is that enemies don't have proper audio cues to warn you about incoming attacks. Again they fling projectiles at you and you can't can't hear that over the top of your sword slashes, or the enemies just lunge at you completely unannounced from off screen. It's ridiculous how little information is provided to the player during combat. If you had a camera that could be pulled back, this would be fine. If you had a functional UI warning you about incoming threats, this would be fine. If you had enemies designed in such a way that they could telegraph their attacks, this would be fine. Three chances this game had to get this right, 
three chances blown. The biggest visual clarity issue though is how awash this game is with particle effects. You cannot fucking see what is going on in this game because you are constantly blinded by particle effects. Either when you're hitting things or when you're being hit or when something is using an ability or when something dies. I mean, look at this. Look at this frame by frame. What is this? What am I fighting? Between the particle effects and the motion blur and the screen shake, you just can't see. Even when I slow it down to this speed, frame by frame, you still can't make any sense of it. Which brings us to the next point, enemy attacks and their telegraph windows. What you didn't see in that clip was an enemy winding up and executing an attack in only 0.7 of a second. This is the moment when the attack began, when his shield started this white glowing thing, and this is the moment when it connected, 0.7 of a second later. This game is absolutely full of these bullshit attack timings that do not give you a reasonable window to react to them. Because the combat framework is so weak, the game relies on these essentially unblockable attacks to throttle you as a player. Their sole purpose is to interrupt you mid-combo and knock you down. Which brings us to Stagger. You know how in the Avengers everything staggered you and knocked you down, it was really annoying? It's worse here. Absolutely everything staggers you. Everything. You spend so much time on your ass in this game, just unable to control your character until they recover from the animation. It's not fun at all. And this falls into a broader issue around enemy design and how so many of these enemies just don't belong in this game because they're not fun to fight. There are so many ranged enemies who just sit across the map taking shots at you and when you finally run up to them, they just teleport away. So you spend all this time just running back and forward across these combat spaces trying to capture them. You have enemies that place invulnerability shields on other enemies and they just step backwards over and over again while you try and swing at them. You have these healer dudes who just instantly heal everything in this massive AoE around them. These enemies are just frustrating. Like. Again, it's the same as the Avengers. They designed enemies that are specifically unfun to fight and that suck the life out of all the player kits. They did the exact same thing here in Godfall. The worst part of this game though, the absolute worst, bar none, is how this game handles animation cancelling and input queuing. Okay, so first of all, animation cancelling. There is none. In other games like fucking gods and monsters or phoenix immortal rising whatever from ubisoft you know that game even that has animation cancelling where you can start an attack and then abandon that attack early in the animation if you suddenly need to switch to a dodge or a block or something else this makes combat feel really responsive as it allows the player to react to what the enemy is doing Godfall is a game where at least half of the weapons are slow and have really long wind-up animations. You'd think that this type of game would have animation cancelling to stop combat from feeling clunky, but no, it doesn't. There's no animation cancelling at all. Once you press that button, you're committed. So again, you might say, hey man, Monster Hunter doesn't have animation cancelling, why does this game need it? In Monster Hunter, you are typically fighting one monster, maybe two, and you almost always have both of them in your sights at all times. This here, you are constantly surrounded by enemies who can attack you at any time and without any warning. The developers have specifically said that they were inspired by Monster Hunter's combat here, and you can kind of feel it actually, especially with the Greatsword, but it's a complete misapplication of the lessons of Monster Hunter, with so many real-time threats surrounding you at all times who can attack you whenever they want, and with so little wind-up for each of those attacks, this game needed animation cancelling. Input queuing. Okay, I've never seen a game do this before. I can't think of a game that handles input queuing in this way. Maybe I'm just forgetting something, but I'm pretty sure no game has done it like this before. Okay, here it is, right? In pretty much every melee game you'll play, you'll be swinging a sword, and then you'll see some enemy coming at you, getting ready to take a swing. So while you're swinging, while you're still in the middle of that swing animation, you'll press the block button, such that when the animation is over, you'll immediately go into a block the first moment the game will allow it. That's called input queuing, and it's how every game works. Every game except Godfall. In Godfall, when you hit a button, your entire input queue is completely locked until after that animation has finished. If you hit the block button while you are swinging your sword, nothing will happen. You need to wait until after the swing has completed and then hit the block button. 
What makes this even more fun is that of course, every action has a different timing. So you need to memorize when the animation has finished for dodging, for swinging with a sword versus swinging with dual blades, for bringing up your shield. And if you misjudge the timing on any of those and you press a button, your character will do literally nothing. It's like you never pressed a button at all. And they took this to the absolute extreme, mind you. So you can't dodge while you have your shield up. You'd expect that the dodge command would kind of override the shield animation and you would drop your shield and then immediately move. No, you first need to release the block button, wait for that animation to complete and then hit the dodge button. You can't lock onto a target using R3 when you are mid animation. You need to wait for whatever it is you're doing to end before you can do that. When you get knocked down, you need to wait for the stagger animation to finish until you can input your next command and queue it up. It's just, it's so bad. This ridiculous approach to input queuing not only feels shit, it actively limits the flow of combat since your abilities need to be primed by holding down the left trigger. And there's this sort of priming animation that needs to take place before you can use them. You imagine when you're looking at this game that you can kind of weave your abilities in with your combos, but you can't because the input queuing does not allow that. You basically need to take a break from your combos to let your abilities prime before you can execute them. As a result, combat in this game feels laughably clunky, like absurdly clunky. Like you want to check if your controller is broken kind of clunky. It's, it's honestly that bad. Now, I know that some people will point to the more innovative aspects of Godfall's combat design. So, uh, credit where it's due, there's definitely some cool stuff here, right? There's the breach system, which is akin to like posture damage. There's the soul shatter mechanic, which basically banks a bunch of your damage with light attacks, and that can kind of be detonated with heavy attacks. And then there's the polarity charge thing, which actively encourages you to switch weapons during combat so as to maintain maximum efficiency. I agree. These are all cool things. Honestly, I hope these ideas are built on in other games because I don't believe Godfall will survive, but we'll come back to that point later. Regardless, these positive innovations don't matter at all when the fundamentals of this combat are so broken. Like, and I feel this boss encounter is perhaps the best bringing together of everything I've described, okay? So this is Solaris Ascendant. Now, get ready for this, okay? This guy is like a mechanical General Grievous looking dude and he only has one melee attack, maybe two, and he barely uses those at all. What he'll generally do is float in the air where you can't hit him and he'll rain down beams that will knock you over and set the ground on fire, right? Now this is where it gets really good. Because the camera is so tight in and you can't pull it back, you can't see where the beams are going to land, but you need to keep dodging to avoid them because running is too slow. So you're essentially just blindly sliding left and right, hoping to get lucky and, and avoid the beams. You won't get lucky though, you'll get hit. And when you do, you will be stun locked by the beams because you're input locked during the stagger animation. So there's no ability for you to queue up a dodge and you can't use your shield to block them. Once he's done that sequence, you'll then haul ass over to him where you can hit him maybe twice. And then what he'll do is he'll fly up in the air again. He'll explode and then set the ground on fire underneath him. And then he'll just stay there taking shots at you. So you can't hit him because he's in the fire. And this is a melee game where you've only got like a shield that you can throw at him, which is on like a 30 second cooldown. If you manage to grind through all of that and you get to the last phase, he will spawn an orb in the middle of the arena, which can't be attacked and it will shoot more explosive beams at you that set the ground on fire. And you don't get any warning when that orb is firing. It just does it at random intervals. That's the encounter that these developers have built for their melee focused looter slasher. I was just jaw on the floor while I was grinding this out because I was like, who are these people? In the end, I did beat it though, not through skill mind you, just through sheer persistence because get this, in this game, the bosses have health checkpoints, so you don't need to kill them all in one go. You can slowly grind them down, death after death after death. And this for me was the ultimate proof that this combat is awful, and the developers kind of know that it's awful because they sort of admit it with this ridiculous health system. Like, what kind of game has a boss health bar that doesn't fully regenerate when you die? What sort of boss encounter can be grinded down through a process of attrition rather than through genuine skill of overcoming the challenge? I think the developers did this because they knew that what they have built fundamentally does not work. Like they playtested this and they were like, shit man, 
this doesn't work, this is, this is bad, uh, it's too late to fix it, well, what can we do? And someone was like, I know, let's make it so the boss health doesn't regenerate, so that people could just bash their heads against the wall and eventually grind it to death. Sounds good? Sounds good. Ship it. How anyone can say that the combat in this game is good is absolutely fucking beyond me. Alright, so I've already given this game a bit of a pummeling. You've probably heard enough at this point, so let's try and wrap this up fast. Let's do loot, progression, and endgame all in one hit. Let's talk progression first. So basically, there's two main progression pathways for you during your playthrough, and they are unlocking the talent tree and unlocking all of the god frames, which is what I'm calling them. God frames. The talent tree is really one of the best features of Godfall. Most of the more innovative combat stuff that I've spoken about in the previous section, plus a whole lot more, is housed in this talent tree. There's a ton of nodes and they each have five levels to them, and a lot of them unlock straight up stats, but many of them unlock things like the ability to target weak points or new moves you can do with your shield. Unlocking nodes provides you with more meaningful expansions to your core gameplay loop, and they make it more fun to play this game, which is only a good thing. The other thing you're working towards is unlocking the various god frames. Now, when you look at the trophy wall here in Sanctum, and you see all the god frames proudly displayed, you get a sense that these are all different classes, akin to something like warframes or javelins in Anthem, and that when you embody them, you gain access to a completely different style of play with different abilities, etc. Nope, these things are basically exactly the same. The only variation they have is the passive bonus damage or effects their attacks will inflict. Like one will deal bleed damage and the other one deals water damage. And they have a super move which is on a really long cooldown and that also applies that same status damage or it summons like AI helpers to help you fight in battle. The differences between these god frames are so insignificant that after I unlocked like four of them, I just couldn't be bothered to unlock any more. Like I had resources to do so. I could unlock a whole bunch in fact, but I was like, what's the point? I'd have much rather they made four functional god frames that each felt distinct rather than 12 god frames that all look distinct but play identically. Okay, so loot. Overall, Godfall's loot system manages to get some things right. Weapons and gear all have stats that make sense and the values are clear and the increments are meaningful and you can synergize a lot of the stats to arrive at builds that feel purposeful rather than just thrown together. You can see that a certain god frame would rely on bleed damage and then you can stack bonus bleed damage across your items to arrive at a more efficient build. While this all works, it's very simple stuff. There are status effects like Ignite or Bleed or Curse, but they all just do the same thing. It's just bonus damage. It's the looter equivalent of different colored M&Ms. Yeah, they look different, but they all taste the same in the end. Again, much like the Avengers and Anthem, there's no link between the appearance of your character and the armor they're wearing. Your weapon appearance changes, but the rest of your gear is all trinkets and charms and rings and banners and invisible stuff. This is such a bad trend in looter games, and I really hope it dies soon. Stat sticks are inherently less fun than an item that looks cool and has cool stats, but developers seem unwilling to go down this path because they'd rather monetize the appearance of your character, which is what I expect Godfall will eventually do when it goes free to play. More on that later. When it comes to the end game, I have not played any more than like two hours of it because there is no way I am wasting my time on that. I know what it is though, I know it's the exact same three areas and the exact same five bosses, only more advanced difficulties do add new mechanics to bosses, which is fine. You're mainly doing something called Dreamstones, which are just randomized roguelike rehashes of the content you've already done, but with some stat modifiers thrown in, and you do those a few times and it culminates in a boss battle. There's also this tower challenge thing, which gets progressively more difficult the higher you go. I can't pass judgment on this endgame because I haven't experienced it fully, but no description I have read makes it sound remotely appealing. Which, to be honest, is pretty par for course for most newly launched looter games, so we really shouldn't be too surprised at this point. At the start of this video, I said that Godfall felt like a scam. That's a strong word to use, so I want to explain what I meant by that. It's not just the $70 price tag on what is clearly a buggy, incomplete, phoned-in affair. As I said, if this game was totally free, I still wouldn't recommend it to you, and I think this price point is daylight robbery and Gearbox should be ashamed of themselves for selling it. But that's not why I think this is a scam. 
This feels like a scam to me because for some reason, just a few weeks prior to launch, the developers announced that this would be an online only game. And I'm not talking DRM or whatever, I'm talking like Destiny or Warframe, etc., where the game entirely depends on online servers to run. You cannot play any of this game offline. The disc is completely useless to you other than to authenticate your purchase. So then you might say, what's the big deal? This is a looter and most looters are online only. Why is this a problem here in Godfall? It's a problem because the developers of this game have specifically said that this is not a live service game and it won't have microtransactions. The other looters we've spoken about are all live service games powered by microtransactions, so the online only stuff makes sense to protect their game economies. Why does this game need to do that? In short, it doesn't. I mean, get this, right? This is an online only game that doesn't have matchmaking. The developers are constantly harping on about how Godfall is intended to be played co-op, but they didn't bother to implement any form of online matchmaking at all. None of my friends were dumb enough to buy this, so I played through this whole thing on my own. And get this, even if one of my friends was dumb enough to buy this, the only co-op play is server-based rather than peer-to-peer, -peer, and there's no Oceanic servers. So there are all these threads everywhere from players outside of America and Europe who are like, what the fuck, why did you do this? This lag is unplayable. Think about that. They made a melee slasher game, which is all about split second timing, and they built an online co-op framework that is guaranteed to have huge amounts of lag unless you are playing in specific regions. So again, why did they do this? As certain as I was that Anthem was dead on arrival, as certain as I was that Amazon's Crucible would not survive, I am certain that Godfall will go free to play. Like, I have zero doubt about that. When that happens, all of the people that paid 180 Australian dollars for a copy of this game are just getting the royal middle finger from Gearbox Publishing. What's really crazy about this though, is that Gearbox went through this exact thing with Battleborn when they made an online only game that they sent free to play eventually and is about to be taken offline such that you won't even be able to play the single player campaign when those servers get switched off in January next year. Now to be fair, Gearbox actually put real work into Battleborn. They really tried with that one. They sort of just got crushed under Blizzard's boot but it doesn't change the fact that they should have learned from that and not made another game online only when it didn't need to be. I mean, all the people who paid money for Battleborn, myself included, will not be able to play that game at all when it gets deleted in January. I honestly believe that at the very least, Godfall will go free to play and at the very worst will suffer the same deletion Battleborn is about to suffer. So that's my final score. Will go free to play or get deleted out of 10. This video was brought to you by Raycon True Wireless Earbuds. And if you haven't got yourself a pair of earbuds yet, then you are missing out. I've been using Raycons for nearly a year now, and I was skeptical about them at first because they're literally half the price of other earbuds. And I was like, I don't know, man, sounds kind of shady, but no, the quality was just as good or better than other earbuds I had used, and the battery life was awesome as well. Raycon's newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet, with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. Raycons are part of my everyday now. I use them when I'm outside, when I'm stuck at home, when I'm listening to audiobooks, or just when I'm catching up on YouTube videos on my phone. They're the sort of thing that if I lost them, I would just immediately buy another set of them because I couldn't live without them. Best of all, Raycons come with a 45 day return policy, so you don't need to take my word for it. You can try them for yourself, and if you aren't happy with them, you get your money back. Easy. Raycons make a perfect holiday gift, which is great because at the moment they're running a special. It's the best price you can get all year on Raycons, but hurry as this offer is available for a limited time only. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com forward slash skill up to get 20% off your Raycon purchase. Thanks Raycon for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so I know to do better for next time. If you enjoyed yourself, consider subscribing. And if you really enjoyed yourself, maybe consider hitting that notification bell so you never miss a video. You can see my patrons here on the left. They're awesome. They're amazing. If you want to join them, check out my Patreon page. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.